We have with us our justice squad, two great attorneys rejoining us again, and both have covered this case so closely right along with us. Jeff Gold, Janet Johnson with us. All right, uh, let me ask you two. Again, we have our five most shocking elements of this case, and really some of it is even before the case began. But to you, and Jeff, I'll start with you. What grabbed you about this case and kept you coming back? Jody Arias, of course. Uh, Jody Arias is why we started to cover it. Jody Arias was the most interesting thing about it. It drew viewers in. It certainly drew us in. Uh, you know, when we listened to all that direct testimony that she gave uh, over 11 days, and she finally came to that moment when she got up to the murder, and for, I think you called it 11 minutes, she said nothing. The world in this particular case changed. Mm. Deductive pose there uh, in the interrogation room. Jeff Gold, what do you make of uh, her antics even before this trial began? Well, first of all, as to the headstand, I, you know, I've thought about that when it happened and it was on air a lot. I really think a lot of my uh, women friends pointed out to me that she is a narcissist and she really just wanted the blood to rush to her face because she didn't have makeup. But this, this whole case, this whole case was all about her trying to make a defense of domestic violence, so she's the victim, post-traumatic stress disorder, so she could explain how everything went away. It was always about her and never about the real victim, Travis Alexander, until the end, and she was convicted. All right. Well, you mentioned it, and this was about her in a lot of ways. She was on that stand for 18 days. I thought it was pathetic. I mean, think about the entire trial was a slap in the face to any true domestic violence victim, to any true victim of post-traumatic stress disorder. And here, she was simply going through a list of things that might help her. And this was right after she had given an interview to local Fox saying, kill me, kill me, I don't want to live. And instead of putting up or shut up, she came out with this little laundry list that, uh, that the worst attorney would have just went through and, and, and done it pro forma. It was nothing compared to the trial itself. And by the way, that one person that she convinced apparently was the foreman. Let's get the justice squad in here. Jeff Gold, I think a lot of our viewers are wondering, could some of these post-verdict interviews be shown to a new jury in a new penalty phase? Uh, yeah, they can. In fact, you know, we speculated whether that would come in uh, even in the last one. So, yeah, all her words could be used if admissible, if relevant. Uh, I think Juan Martinez didn't need it, uh, although he thought he didn't need it, although maybe the next time around he's going to need to convince 30% uh, more of the, the jurors, so he's going to think about it. Uh, she is the master manipulator. She killed Travis Alexander after she couldn't manipulate him anymore. She tried to manipulate uh, uh, this uh, jury. She, I'm sure, tried to manipulate her lawyers uh, who tried to get out of the case as soon as she did that ridiculous uh, interview with Troy Hayden. Uh, so she was always, until the very end, trying to control things. I think at the end she gave up. Uh, and, and, I'm, and if I'm on that jury, I'm thinking, you're full of crap. <laughs> yes. You're into this like anybody else. Jeff Goldway in. Right. And by the end of the case, it became very clear, at least to me, in speculation, but still clear. Why was there this tape? Who made this tape? Jody Arias made the tape, and why did she make the tape? She made the tape most likely to blackmail Travis Alexander one more time into her manipulation. And then, of course, later she used it for something else. Maybe she used it because she thought that, this, that she knew she was going to kill him. Maybe not, but it was, again, her manipulation. So, yeah, we were taken in for days and days and days until we all realized there was nothing to her story, nothing at all. Okay, let's listen, everybody. I think we've cleaned this to the table and we've been going over them. Jeff, did Juan Martinez do a good job of keeping the victim, Travis Alexander, in the forefront? Well, I mean, let me go back to what you asked, was he lost for just one second, Mike? I mean, I, he wasn't lost, but he was beaten and mm -hmm. bruised and stabbed again and again and again in this trial by the defense. And, to, and when she was on the stand for 11 days on direct and then another seven days, yes, Juan Martinez did a good job uh, in coming back, but how let her be on the stand? Then we had Alice LaViolette and Dick Samuels on the stand forever. And again, Travis being beaten up, beaten up, stabbed again as the victim. So he wasn't lost, but this case was a travesty uh, in allowing the victim to be so uh, uh, treated. Hey, Tiff, to bring it back to the victim and the victim's family, you heard from Stephen Alexander, sister Samantha spoke as well. How hard is it 
for a family, not only to lose a brother, but then your brother, to Jeff's point, victim here, takes a beating